Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today we're going to be talking about the weather for Northern Australia. We do have a significant amount of rainfall expected for far Northern Queensland in about three or four days time. In fact, areas between Townsville up towards Cooktown can expect up towards 400 millimetres on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. More on that a little bit later on. And we're also going to be talking about a tropical low that's expected to develop in the Arafura Sea, just north of Darwin uh, that could give Darwin a late season tropical cyclone scare. But, but before I go any further, this video is brought to you by the two special announcements that are going to be happening tomorrow. If you haven't already subscribed, then make sure you are subscribing uh, because we do have a very special video coming out, Winter Weather Forecast 2024 for Australia, and we've also got a brand new project launching, and let me tell you, you do not want to miss the special giveaway tomorrow. So thank you so much for watching this video, and let's get straight into it. First of all, we'll take a look at the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Paul. I um, mean, there's really not much to look at. I mean, you can see the system really starting to die off now in terms of a lack of convective thunderstorm activity. Um, the remnants of the system are located here south of uh, PNG and the Solomon Islands, and they'll continue to die off over the course of today. In fact, if you were to really zoom out and you didn't know what you're looking for uh, in terms of tropical cyclone, Paul, you would have no idea where to look or where to spot it. It's actually this dying cluster of thunderstorms right here where the cursor point is. Um, much more thunderstorm activity towards the north. It has been completely flushed out by wind shear and dry air as we looked at yesterday. But don't be fooled, it still carries a little bit of energy and tropical cyclone. Cyclone Paul will be bringing said energy to the Queensland coastline over the next couple of days. Um, throughout the course of Saturday and Sunday, nothing crazy in terms of rainfall expected for far northern Queensland, especially for locations between Townsville and Hopevale. Keeping track of time on the bottom part of your screen as always, and then continuing through. Um, in terms of rainfall accumulations, you're talking about greens and yellows being moderate falls, and then the oranges and the reds being heavy falls, and they don't really come onto the scene until probably about Tuesday when this first big wave of moisture starts to collide with the Queensland coastline. Now, the Eastern Blue Earth model has never really called for a significant amount of rainfall. They're still calling for a little bit of rainfall here and there. Over the next three days, nothing crazy. But then as you get in towards the five-day forecast period, you're starting to talk up towards 100 millimetres now in some locations. But it always has been the Access G3 model calling for a very significant amount of rainfall over the next uh, sort of four to six days or so. Um, and yet, from about Tuesday afternoon, this rainfall really does start to pick up. It peaks at around Wednesday afternoon by the looks of things before slowly starting to ease off from Thursday afternoon. But it looks like from about Wednesday 8am right through to Thursday 8am, it is going to be very, very wet with frequent torrential downpours around Cairns, Innisfail, Tully, Cooktown and up towards the Daintree Rainforest and maybe even up towards Lockhart River and uh, Moomba as well in uh, further northern Queensland right up towards Weeper. Uh, so yeah, quite a lot of rainfall can be expected there. And in terms of accumulation, over the next five days, expect it uh, up towards 250 millimetres, maybe 300 in certain locations. Looks like Woodrell Woodrell will cop close to 300. And then outside of Innisfail, two to 250 millimetres can be expected. And that again jumps up a little bit further as you go into the 10-day forecast period on Friday. There will be a little bit more rainfall expected on Friday. And then I believe it does start to ease off for good through Saturday, Sunday, and then into Monday. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything crazy there. But, but yeah, it looks like maximum rainfall accumulations over the next 10 days just outside of Woodrell Woodrell will approach 5 to 600 millimetres. Now this is a much more reasonable forecast compared to what was presented to us yesterday from the Access G3 where up to 1.2 metres of rainfall was uh, forecast. At this time I'm only expecting 350 or 400 millimetres to be the roof. I still think 500 millimetres is quite bullish from the Access G3 forecast model but I do still think that there will be a very significant amount of rainfall up in far northern Queensland starting from Tuesday evening and persisting right through to Friday morning. As I said, Wednesday 8am to Thursday 8am will be crunch time for the worst of the rainfall, but there will be some heavy showers outside of that. And you might notice that it has been pushed forward about a day from the forecast models. That it just tells me that they are pretty certain with this event happening. Uh, the remnants of Cyclone Paul will be colliding with the Queensland coastline probably around Tuesday, so that will be uh, when that big moisture burst comes ashore. So yeah, we're really looking out for this moisture burst happening about then 
Um, and yes, some significant rainfall across the northern parts of Queensland as well. It's reciprocated amongst the other forecast models as well. I mean, there's um, no reason to doubt this sort of system happening because it is, again, forecast by the other forecast models. The GFS and the Eastern Bluff uh, as well, very happy with the amount of rainfall that is expected. The access always on the higher end, but I do feel like in this circumstance, they are going to be correct and there will be some location in far northern Queensland that gets 400 millimetres of rainfall. So I am following them in this video, just my judgment saying that they will be correct at this time. Now, as promised, we've got to take a look at that tropical low for uh, the Arafura Sea, but Far North Queensland viewers don't click off because there is still a chance that you do receive some impacts, especially those on the western side of the Cape York Peninsula. Uh, this tropical low will likely be developing probably around Wednesday or Thursday, and I have been saying this for quite a few days now. This enhanced band of moisture that's going to be moving through tropical Australia uh, from the monsoon trough, it's going to spin up a tropical low here near Timor uh, and Indonesia. Now, that's likely going to become a tropical cyclone very briefly. Uh, the forecast models have been very happy with this becoming a tropical cyclone for a couple of days, but they have since backed it off very slightly. The Access G3 model calling for a tropical cyclone to go straight in towards Darwin or a very strong tropical low close to cyclone status to go in towards Darwin. Oh, this is a GFS model rather. We should be taking a look at the Access G3 model because the Access G3 model still has this becoming a tropical cyclone, but I was thinking that that was funny because I don't recall it going into Darwin from the initial forecast, but yeah, just playing the Access G3 model right back to Wednesday at this time, you can see significant rainfall is going to be drawn by this tropical low that's going to be developing just towards the uh, east of Timor, uh, on the southern, uh, in the extreme eastern parts of Indonesia and near PNG. Uh, that's going to be developing quite slowly through Wednesday and Thursday, and that'll be the reason why there's going to be a lot of moisture colliding with uh, the far north Queensland coastline. Papua New Guinea as well could receive a very significant amount of rainfall over the next week, so. If you're one of the 1% of my viewers that's watching from PNG, just watch out for some pretty significant rainfall, especially Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, but yeah, take a look at this tropical cyclone's formation. It really doesn't happen until about Friday, and that's when it gets fully disconnected from the uh, inflow band that's going to be bringing all of that moisture, and it will likely become a much more independent and self-sustainable system about then, and it will start to develop probably by around next weekend, Saturday and into Sunday, becoming a fully-fledged cyclone Sunday, and probably picking up the next name on the Australian naming list. So we've had a pretty good end to Cyclone Season 2024. Um, in fact, it has gotten a little bit closer to average than what I thought. Cyclone Paul bumped our numbers up to, I believe, six Cyclones for the season. So it actually hasn't been all that disappointing in terms of numbers. And I believe that this system will take us to number seven. So the season actually hasn't been all that flat, that's for sure. In terms of peak wind speeds uh, for this tropical cyclone, probably expect no more than maybe uh, 50 or 60 knots here, maybe category two status at the absolute highest echelon here. The Axis G3 model is notorious for overestimating these systems, especially so far out. Uh, but I do feel like this system still has a hot shot of becoming something uh, strong. And peak wind gusts, again, probably approaching that sort of 150 kilometer an hour threshold. This tropical cyclone will likely be quite strong at peak intensity, but you're pushing really close into late April at this time here as we get later on into the forecast. So it is quite hard to tell what the conditions will be like for this system, if they'll be favorable or not. Now, I did say that this will likely be bringing impacts to far northern Queensland. Well, yes, in terms of rainfall, it will be. Because this will be connected to the monsoon trough right up until probably about Saturday or so, there will be the chance of some pretty significant rainfall uh, offshore from Queensland, which could swing itself onshore at a moment's notice through Saturday and Sunday. So that three day rainfall event that I've been hyping up for the last couple of days from Tuesday through to Thursday, it could actually persist a little bit longer than that until about Sunday morning, depending on what this tropical cyclone does, especially if it forms in the Gulf of Carpentaria. If it does that, then that rainfall event is going to be much more likely to be more intense for the far north Queensland area, but we're not 100% sure if that's a likely scenario at this time. And as I did talk about yesterday, the MJO is going to be favouring tropical cyclone activity for the um, South Pacific as well. It looks like two tropical cyclones, the first since I believe January, will likely be forming for Vanuatu and the Solomon Islands, and maybe even Fiji as well, probably later on into April, Saturday and Sunday, or next Saturday and Sunday, the 20th and the 21st respectively. So we'll have to be keeping an eye on the South Pacific because it looks like we've got some rumbles of activity there. In terms of other interesting weather happening across 
Australia. Well, one thing that was very interesting is Perth broke its rain drought last night in a very unexpected band of thunderstorms that came through. Of course, I did highlight the fact that there were going to be some thunderstorms a couple of days ago, probably Friday or Saturday night, uh, and they certainly did materialise and they did not disappoint. Here's a little bit of footage from uh, yesterday. I was uh, just uh, finishing a workout and just take a look at the clouds that were coming in. I had not seen clouds like this for probably about eight months or so, so it was a refreshing sight to see. And then driving out for dinner last night, it was pouring down and it was wet, let me tell you. Now, I know that maybe 15 millimetres seems like absolutely nothing, especially to the friends up in far northern Queensland, uh, which have received close to 15,000 millimetres this year, it feels like, uh, but still a very significant amount of rainfall and totally blessed to have it. It was some great rainfall last night, uh, really did enjoy it, and it was very, very refreshing to see, that's for sure. Uh, the Bureau of Meteorology's radar forecasting, you know how they've got a one-hour radar forecasting if you're using the app? Well, that was put to a test last night because the thunderstorms were stationary and its algorithm was using its typical uh, moving in a southeasterly direction uh, trajectory. Uh, that's what the algorithm and the AI was putting in. The thunderstorm forecast that the Bureau of Meteorology gave was very inaccurate and it caught a lot of people off guard. I was getting notifications that storms were likely in my area from about 2 to 3 p.m. when they actually came around at around 6 p.m. And that's because... Um, if you are confused about why that happened, why your phone was getting lit up with notifications about thunderstorms in the area right through the afternoon when they actually didn't happen until the early evening, especially for those in the southern suburbs, which where I am, uh, that's because the algorithm that the Bureau of Meteorology uses to predict rainfall, it got the storms wrong because these systems were stationary, which is very unusual for Perth, but that's just the way that they were last night. Anyways, that is enough ramble on the Perth systems. I'd like to give a special shout out to the channel sponsors, then Amazon on screen at right now their support really does mean a lot and a special shout out to all of the subscribers as well make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow uh the special announcement tomorrow and a very special video as well the winter weather forecast 2024 uh, i cannot wait to be releasing that but yeah that is all from me and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye